Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to another AutoLine Daily. Later on in the show, we'll get to your comments and questions with You Said It. But now let's get to the news. We've been following Google's autonomous car efforts over the last few years, and now the company says its cars can drive better than human beings. Technology Review, which is MIT's magazine about innovation, reports that data collected during Google's test drives shows that the software is better at maintaining a safer driving distance and drives much smoother compared to most of us carbon-based bipeds. All those sensors and cameras on autonomous cars also make it very easy to determine which car is at fault in an accident. And speaking of self-driving cars, a new study from the Eno Center for Transportation Policy says that autonomous cars could do wonders for the American economy it says that even if only 10% of the cars on the road were autonomous, they could reduce traffic fatalities by 1,000 lives a year and save the country tens of billions of dollars. But if, in time, 90% of the cars on the road are autonomous, the technology could save 20,000 lives a year and put another $450 billion back into the economy every year. Volkswagen's modular platform, known as MQB, was expected to save the automaker a boatload of money, but now some analysts are questioning whether it will ever lead to any significant cost savings at all. VW says the platform will help cut material costs by 20% and shorten assembly time by 30%, which could lead to annual cost savings of $19 billion by 2019. But Reuters reports that one analyst says MQB is overhyped due to its high engineering costs. Another forecast that the company will only save about $4 billion by the end of the decade. VW will post its third quarter earnings tomorrow, so we'll have a better idea if MQB is helping the company or not. One of the reasons why companies love to get involved in the automotive industry is the amount of money each automaker spends. Ford, for example, buys $100 billion worth of parts, supplies, and services every year from about 1,300 suppliers worldwide. But get this, the top 65 suppliers, or what Ford calls its ABF suppliers, that's for Aligned Business Framework, the top 65 account for $60 billion of that buy. The top 100 suppliers account for $80 billion. In the years to come, Ford would like to reduce its 1,300 suppliers down to 750. So even though many companies would love to become suppliers to the auto industry, the car companies all want fewer suppliers who then get bigger contracts so they can offer bigger discounts. At next week's SEMA show in Las Vegas, Chevrolet's goal is to showcase it as the brand of choice when it comes to performance, personalization, and enhanced capability with 39 vehicles it's going to have on display. The company will have everything from a modified Spark EV to several Silverado pickups. But first we get to look at the cars. I already mentioned the modified Spark EV, which boasts a zero to 60 time in the low seven second range due to a performance algorithm and light weighting. There will be several Sonic models one of which is going to have something changed on it each day of the show to show customers just how personal they can get. But when it comes to the bigger cars, the Cruze, Malibu, and Impala, Chevrolet wanted to be a little more understated with mild ground effect packages and, of course, larger wheels. We'll have more on the other vehicles leading up to the show. Mazda's also showing off four models it will have at SEMA, two Mazda 3s and two sixes. No information has been given with the pictures, so we'll just have to go by what we see, which is not a whole lot. All the cars appear to have larger wheels and tire packages, larger brakes, ground effect packages, and unique paint schemes. Although one of the Mazda 6s is wearing a CS6 diesel marking on the front door, so we'll be intrigued to see if a diesel performance package 
is in our future. Hey, coming up next, it's time for You Said It. There's so much to love about Bridgestone's Dueler tires. The amazing traction, the quiet, comfortable ride, and they're really tough. It's like loving three tires in one. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Ron E. writes in to say, I thought there was an earlier show that stated Ram was dropping the Cummins diesel and going with the Fiat diesel. Well, Ron E., the light-duty Ram pickup will get the Fiat diesel, but they're keeping the Cummins for the heavy-duty version. Mike saw our report on how Volvo will be marketing its carbon filters for passenger cabins as a way for Chinese car buyers to escape the country's heavily polluted air. I wonder how long the performance of those air filters on the Volvo will really last. Is there any proof these filters will really help people? Will the filters ever be replaced as they clog up? Will the aftermarket filters be as effective? Yeah, a lot of questions there, but yes, these filters really work. They trap pollen, dirt, and odors, and really work with people who have any kind of respiratory problem. The filters are commonly located behind the glove box and can be easily replaced. They usually cost anywhere from about $10 to $30. T. Bejma heard yesterday's report about suppliers being mad at General Motors over the new terms and conditions of its contracts. Do you know what in particular the suppliers don't like about the new contract terms, or is it just they were not consulted? Well, they certainly don't like the fact that they were not consulted, but it goes beyond that. There are 40 new terms and conditions, such as making it tougher for suppliers to control their own intellectual property or who they can use as subcontractors. You know, suppliers don't like it when car companies stick their noses so deeply into their business. Drew says, the CTS weight reduction is impressive, but I suspect the added use of expensive lightweight materials is a major reason why the price increased so much. True, that's part of it. But remember, the Cadillac CTS used to be positioned to compete against the BMW 3 Series. Now, the new larger CTS is positioned to compete against the 5 Series, and that's the real reason why the price went up so much. Larry had this to say about the CTS light weighting. I just watched the segment concerning the light weighting of the Cadillac. My concern is with the mixture of metals. Auto companies are turning more and more to adhesives to bond components. Over time, adhesives will dry and become brittle. How safe will these cars be, especially if they're involved in an accident, say, 15 or so years down the road? I gotta tell you, structural adhesives have been used in making cars for at least 25 years that I'm aware of. This is space-age stuff that can withstand stress, fatigue, and extreme temperatures. In many cases, such as bonding, steel, and aluminum, it's the only way to safely join these different materials. In fact, using structural adhesives provides a continuous bond versus the spaced out spot welds that have been used traditionally. Structural adhesives usually result in cars with better crash ratings. And I'm not aware of any safety problems involving structural adhesives, even on older cars. Hey, thanks so much for your questions and comments. We truly like getting them. And by the way, we want even more of your questions this Thursday night for AutoLine After Hours, when our guest will be Mitch Claw, the vehicle line executive for the new Jeep Cherokee. That's starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time at AutoLine.tv. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.